All right, I'm at uh, the IMSA, um, Illinois, Illinois Math and Science Academy in Aurora, Illinois. This is building 1506, it's a dormitory. Uh, it's 1506, this system was installed in uh, 2007, or maybe 2008 actually, sorry, 2008. This is a Firelight MS9600 panel um, version, uh, I think it's 2.6. We can check the firmware when we're done here, but been called that the customer uh, was told that the, the AVs weren't activating on the second floor. So I came out and um, um, found system all normal, just like we see here. And um, But I observed that the second floor, which is on loop two, this, this panel has uh, loop one and loop two, uh, SLC. Loop one is the first floor, loop two is the second floor. And uh, it appears that the smoke detectors are not blinking. So we're going to go up and take a look at that right now. Showing normal. We're going to just, I'm just going to keep the video recording. Let's, uh, let's go upstairs, uh, Donnie, if you got a second. You guys, they can talk, whatever, follow. And uh, so, so. Oop, push. Push. So we're on the first floor now. First floor devices are blinking and working because they're on SLC 1. But we'll take the ladder. We'll go up and all right. We're in one of the wings, D wing, second floor. So here's one of the detectors, and I'm just gonna hold this camera on here for a while. It is not blinking. Now I'm not sure, we're gonna try removing the head first, and then we're gonna try activating the detector and see if we get an alarm or not. The, uh, the customer said that the AVs were not sounding on this floor, but one of the reasons is all the AVs are, are fed through control modules, so my theory is if there's a problem with the SLC, we'll just hold this on here for a little bit now. Um, that maybe, you know, they're, they're not communicating, so obviously if they don't get the signal to activate, uh, the knacks aren't going to, or the strobes aren't going to go. So you can see no blinking. So I'm here on the second floor. If we just open this door from here, we'll be able to hear the panel beeping if I remove this head. Here, I'll get it. Um, just uh, pull the smoke head out for a second. Now let's see if we get a trouble at the panel. Well, I'm not sure. We might. We well, might not. If the SLC is dead, you're not going to get a trouble signal. But there should be a trouble signal. I know. Yeah. So I guess we're not maybe getting a trouble signal. You want me to go down and take a look? Yeah, we would hear it if it was going. I'm just giving it a second to make sure the SLC... Um, hmm. We should probably want to take, take your meter and take a look at what voltage is on the SLC. Yeah, we'll do that. So, we are not getting in trouble. That's removed. Let's uh, actually, let's activate a pole station real quick. The pole stations are here, they do have a, a sounder cover on them. But, uh, yeah, thank you, Cliff. Let's just go ahead and there, we'll turn that off. So we're here. Pull the pole station, no alarm, nothing. Nothing at all. Let's go down and uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh oh, that's a manual one. We got it's a hex key. I got it. We'll go downstairs and get it. These are hex keys. I forgot about that. Let's go back down to the panel. See what we got down there. Back down here. I, 
I think it's still happy too. Yeah, the system is still normal. However, those devices are clearly not working. Let me grab my, uh, here, you got a little screwdriver? Yeah. Let's take the cover off this panel. I mean, it's, no, I need a Phillips, a little Phillips. Oh. There we go, perfect. Perfect, we'll take the cover off this panel just to look at the wiring, but the wiring is all connected. You don't need to hold your uh, for you. That's all right. I got it. So, here's SLC2. Wiring's connected. No problems. I'm fairly certain that if we do a hard reboot on this panel, this panel is going to come up and say initializing, please wait, because that's what it did the other day. So, something is going on. We did the last, the other day, we swapped this card from another building and it didn't seem to make a difference. So it's not the uh, card. Let me grab the meter. We'll check the voltage on that and see what the, what the circuit shows. The meter is right over here. It's all right. Should have been prepared. So, take the for the yeah, this is one of those. All right, so we'll get the fluke meter out. Put it on DC volts. So when I come up here to the loop, I put my this is class A wiring. I've got, uh, here, turn your light off of that. I was not being able to see it. 16, so that seems like a normal voltage. It does not seem like a we're shorted voltage. Why don't we check it out at the device itself? Oh, that's my battery on my meter. <laughs> of course, perfect timing meter. Um, We'll go check it at the device. Anyway, we're going to do some further testing, but as, as you can see in this video, the system is clearly not functioning correctly, and we do not have a trouble. Very, very, very concerning. The customer is very concerned. They've got seven buildings with um, probably 80 or 100 uh, young adults in each building. Okay, when we were when we were when we were uh, upstairs before we left the pole station activated. So the next step in the troubleshooting, I came down here and I I just I lifted the SLC because we were going to just start looking at stuff. And I lifted the SLC and I'll, I'll, of course in a bunch at that point maybe not of course but at that point a bunch of troubles came in. I put the SLC back down. I'm literally ten seconds later put the SLC back down and. Um, the alarm went off. And the alarm went off because we hadn't reset the pull station that did not activate previously. So we did that. I just went up and reset the pull station now and um, reset the panel a minute or two ago and we're in initializing, please wait. I don't think it's going to initialize. It's yeah, I think it's, it's, this is what happened the other day when all that happened. Um, it seems to be stuck. now stuck in initializing, please wait. And, and we're going to go up and check the devices now and see if we do have some blinking activity. When I was resetting the pull station, there was a smoke detector that was blinking. I don't know if it's still blinking. We're going to go see, but there's definitely something funny going on here with this panel. Okay, we're going to come back to this. I mean, it's obviously these things usually do take a while to initialize, but you know, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Usually do it. We're gonna, I'm going to go check the floor again and see if there's anything blinking up there. If not, we'll start disconnecting wiring and tracing out, you know, sections of the building that might be having an issue or not. Um, actually, tracing the wiring, I ended up going right back to the same module that I traced it to the last time I was here, and this is the spot from where I pulled the module and overnighted it to Firelight. 
And I found that, um, you know, when I disconnected the SLC from this module, everything else in the system seemed to be working. This was the only trouble spot. So, okay, this time, then I, then I disconnected the output side. So I disconnected the output side. Here's the output wiring that goes, actually, in this case, to an outdoor strobe. Disconnected, reconnected the SLC, and we've got signal on here. So the SLC now seems to be working. So somehow, this wiring going to an outdoor strobe, whether it's shorted or open, I'm going to put the meter on it here, we're going to see what it is, but whatever condition happened to that wiring, somehow caused a problem on this module that caused that condition that we had on the circuit pre previously that, that's in the previous video. Um, basically, basically panel was normal, none of the devices were working, and no indication of trouble. So now, since it's happened with two modules, one brand new, one that was here, you know, for a couple of years at least, um, it doesn't seem to be the module. It seems to be something with the the wiring. So when I put my meter on this, meters on ohms, meters on ohms, let me see if I can do this and hold the camera all at the same time. I'm going to hold the wires. Uh, of course my meter now is telling me the battery is low. Okay. Reset the meter. Ah. Let's see if we can get this guy in a place where I can actually see it. Yeah, that was an air compressor. That was? Absolutely. I know what an air compressor is. Alright. I'm going to give this one more shot. Put that there. Okay. I'm not doing a very good job of this. At the, at the, uh, at the, uh, I found a different place when I, I can wire it on. Those, the wires are still disconnected up top at the module, and this is just actually a splice point. <coughs> it's reading, um, 89 ohms for some reason, so I don't know. It's just about 89 kilo ohms. Kilo ohms, yeah, sorry, 89 kilo ohms. That's just about double what it should be. So it's not a complete open circuit, but it's about double what it should be. So I don't know if somehow 89 ohms on the output side of a control module would be enough to bring down the system. Maybe that's uh, worth um, experimenting with on the bench. You know, getting um, maybe two 47s and putting them together in series. Of course, that'd be 94, but that's, um, or no, that would be, yeah, 94. So that'd be pretty close. Um, hmm. Anyway, that's it. We're going to go look outside at the outside device and see if we have any indication of what might be going on there. But um, 89 kilo ohms. In the closet. We measured these, you know, the 89 ohms, and actually one side of that, we kilo ohms, sorry, 89 kilo ohms, and one side of that, measuring it to the box, we also measured 80, 89 kilo ohms to the box. So there's there's definitely somewhere downstream a, a, a ground, a ground fault of some kind connected to this box. Whether that's solidly grounded back to the panel, I'm not sure. But this 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 building is an incomplete conduit system all the way, so it really should be. Um, you know, pretty solid back to the panel. So we actually connected the module back. And when we connected the module back, um, 
we connected the loads terminals back to this 89 ohm, kilo ohms that's having a problem. And this happened. The, uh, the light came on, but that's like, it looks like it's blinking really fast. And this is, this is on clip protocol. These are, these are pre LS panels here. And that's on clip protocol and it looks like it's just blinking really fast. And when that happened, when this is blinking, we connected this up. All of the other devices the in the circuit, protocol. they stopped blinking. So every other device on this circuit stopped yeah. blinking. And I'm not really sure right now. We can go downstairs and look. I'm not really sure, but um, my suspicion is the panel's going to say all normal. Uh, let's go take a look. We're just going to take so 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 with that module connected, the SLC on the second floor of this entire building is not working. The one module that's exhibiting that problem is clearly is a problem on the output side of it. Um, but. Let's go see what the panel says now. It, a little bit ago, when I had that module disconnected, the only trouble was the module. But now with that module reconnected, I kind of wonder if we're going to see... Oh, well, okay. Oh, we're seeing an invalid reply still. Okay. So there is a problem with that module still. And I think when I when I take... And now it's, that's the only trouble. I'm, I'm hitting the acknowledge step. That's actually the only trouble. None of the other devices are working. I think if I go back and disconnect that output side, the invalid reply goes away. The rest of the devices on the loop start working, but obviously the, the output side is disconnected. So the question is, is how could that happen? So um, obviously we know now that we probably need to go out, check out the exterior device. Here, we're just gonna do one quick thing. We're gonna go back, disconnect the output side. here a little bit. I'm just going to disconnect it in this lower box because it's a little easier to reach. So the is still on solid. This will just disconnect the output side here. We're gonna, purple goes to black. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gray goes to black. Purple goes to white. Alright. Now it's normal. Yep, we disconnected the module. Yeah, the video that that it's white normal. Yep, so now we've disconnected the output side. And now it's Normal blink. You know what I what you would expect? On? I think you've got AC coming I, I, the... I don't think so. It says 6 volts. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go back down to the panel now. That doesn't go anywhere near AC. That's in a solid pipe. Just from that room to the outside of the building. And there's no doubt that some somewhere in that circuit the wiring is shorted or grounded, but the question is, or maybe not shorted because it's reading 89 kilo ohms. Oh, see, at what we would expect. Now, with those disconnected, because there's no longer 47 kilo ohms across that, this is open. So, the real question is, is how is the output having a problem on that circuit causing all these problems on the SLC. So again to reiterate the output um, between the terminals with the wiring connectors or you know with the wires but it was reading 89 kilo ohms one side of that appeared to be grounded. Anyway we're gonna we're gonna go investigate the outdoor device if we can it's about 30 feet up in the air and it's 10 o'clock at night but um, um, at the very least, we can hopefully have the rest of this building working and just have this one device out of service if we need it. Back at uh, IMSA 1506, we went outside and um, got up to the strobe. It had a uh, 
47K resistor that was marked 47K, and it turns out that when we put the resistor on our meter, it read 89K. Now we took that same resistor so that it's marked 47K. We'll see if I can actually get a video of it here. It's, it's wired to the module right now, and that's the bands are um, yellow, purple, orange. So yellow, purple, orange, it's, it should be a 47K should be a 47k but it's measuring on the on the on the meter about 89k and the minute we put that on there the control module goes back into the the fluttery quick um quick state state and the smoke detectors appear to stop blinking again so the issue definitely seems to be that if you have an 89 kilo ohm resistor across the output of a control module at least on an SLC2 card on a uh, version 2.6 9600 panel, it is absolutely stopping the circuit from working. But it's not showing up as a trouble at the panel. Um, it, was, it was sitting there normal when we first got here and it, this problem existed. So anyway, somehow this resistor has gone bad. We put the 47 kilo ohm like it's supposed to be, which this one was at one point a 47 kilo ohm. We're not sure how it, it changed from a 47 kilo ohm to this. Maybe Cliff suggested a power surge, lightning strike, who knows, something. But, uh, um, it could be temperature, too. Temperature, but it's cool outside, but it's not enough to make that big of a difference. Um, anyway, we're going we're gonna to put my new resistor that was on here temporarily. That's the new one, 47K, outside, and we're expecting the system to go normal. Here, we'll... Um, Maybe we'll do a couple of meter readings real quick, if I can make this happen. I'm going to just take these, hold on one second, we'll put that down. This is the, the bad resistor. The bad resistor. Well, it's reading 86 kilo ohms now. I'm not really holding it very tight, though. That's I'm, well, I got my hand shorting it out. That's why it's reading something than 89. So I can do it without. There we go. 88.0, so 88, 89 ohms, kilo ohms. Um, whereas if I, that's the bad one. Same color bands that go to my good resistor. As you would expect, actually right on 47K. Look at that. Couldn't really get any closer than that. 47K on the new resistor we're going to put in there. Same color bands. If you didn't know any better, if you didn't know any better, you'd say these two are the same resistor. I have them backwards. One's, one's a 1 watt resistor and one's a 2 watt resistor, but that shouldn't make any difference. The one watt resistor is the bad one. I just cannot get the colors on this to show up very well with my camera. Well, there you go. Yellow, purple, orange, yellow, purple, orange.